Welcome to Once Upon a Time, the story time of the San Bruno Library. We have story times at the library every single week, and I hope to see you there sometime. But for now, I'm so glad you're joining me on our cable story time. So I have some fun books to read. Let's get started, just the way we do at the library. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. Hi, ho, the merry -oh. We're glad you're here today. Yay, very good. Okay, my first story is called How Chipmunk Got His Stripes. So before I read this book, I want to show you a picture of a chipmunk. We have chipmunks in California, but not that many here in the Bay Area. So here's a chipmunk. He's a little guy like a little squirrel with stripes on his back. And he makes a, a song, Chip, 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 which is where he gets his name, Chipmunk. All right, so remember that for what a chipmunk looks, chipmunk looks like. And let's find out this story of how some people think the chipmunk got his stripes. This is by Joseph and James Bruchak with pictures by Jose Arruego and Ariane Dewey. One autumn day, long ago, Bear was out walking. As he walked, he began to brag, I am Bear, I am the biggest of all the animals, yes I am. I am Bear, I am the strongest of all the animals, yes I am. I am Bear, I am the loudest of all the animals, yes I am. I am Bear, I am Bear, I can do anything, yes I can. As soon as Bear said those words, a little voice spoke up from the ground. Can you really do anything? Bear looked down. He saw a little brown squirrel standing on his hind legs. Can you really do anything? Brown squirrel asked again. Bear stood up very tall. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. Can you tell the sun not to rise tomorrow morning? Brown squirrel asked. I have never tried that before, but I am bare. I can do that. Yes, I can. Bear turned west to face the sun. It was the time when the sun always goes down. Bear stood up to his full height and spoke in a loud voice. Sun, do not come up tomorrow. At his words, the sun began to disappear behind the hills. You see, Bear said, Sun is afraid of me. He is running away. But will the sun come up tomorrow? Brown Squirrel asked. No, Bear answered, the sun will not come up. Then Bear turned to face east, the direction where the sun always used to come up. He sat down. Little Brown Squirrel sat down beside him. All that night they did not sleep. All that night, Bear kept saying these words. The sun will not come up, mumph. The sun will not come up, mumph. But as the night went on, Little Brown Squirrel began to say something too. He said these words. The sun is going to rise, woo. The sun is going to rise, woo. All through the night they sat there. One by one, other animals gathered round them. Fox and wolf, deer and moose, rabbit and porcupine, hawk and owl, otter and beaver, frog and turtle, and even the little mice came. They wanted to see who would be right, bear or brown squirrel. This is what the other animals heard. The sun will not come up. <clears throat> the sun is going to rise, woo. The sun will not come up. <clears throat> The sun is going to rise, ooh. Finally, it was just before dawn, the time when the sun always used to come up. Look, said Turtle, a little bit of red is starting to show. 
Yes, said Owl, I believe the sun will rise today. Bear only chanted louder, The sun will not come up. But right next to him, Little Brown Squirrel piped up, The sun is going to rise. Woo! And the sun came up. The birds sang their welcoming songs. The bright light of the new day spread over the land. Everyone was happy except for one animal. That animal was Bear. He sat there with his head down and a grumpy look on his face. The happiest animal of all was the little brown squirrel. The sun came up, he chirped. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. The brown squirrel was so happy he forgot what his wise old grandmother had told him when he was very young. Brown squirrel, his grandmother had said, it is good to be right about something. But when someone else is wrong, it is not a good idea to tease him. Now Little Brown Squirrel began to tease Bear. Bear is foolish, the sun came up. Bear is silly, the sun came up. Bear is stupid, the sun... Whomp! Bear's big paw came down on Little Brown Squirrel, pinning him to the ground. Bear leaned over and opened his huge mouth. Yes! Bear growled, the sun did come up. Yes, I do look foolish, but you will not live to see another sunrise. You will not ever tease anyone else again because I, Bear, am going to eat you up. Brown Squirrel thought fast. You are right to eat me, he said. I was wrong to tease you. I would like to say I'm sorry before you eat me, but you are pressing down on me so hard that I cannot say anything. I cannot say anything at all. I cannot even breathe. If you would just lift your paw just a little bit, then I could take a deep breath and apologize before you eat me. That is a good idea, Bear said. I would like to hear you apologize before I eat you. So Bear lifted up his paw. But instead of apologizing, Brown Squirrel ran. He ran as fast as he could towards the pile of stones where he had his home. He had a tunnel under those stones and a nice warm burrow deep underground. Little Brown Squirrel's grandmother stood there in the door waiting for him. Hurry, Brown Squirrel, she called. Hurry, hurry. Little Brown Squirrel dove for the door to his home, but Bear was faster than he looked. He grabbed for Little Brown Squirrel with his big paw. Bear's long, sharp claws scratched Brown Squirrel's back from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. But Brown Squirrel got away. Deep down in his burrow where Bear couldn't get him, Brown Squirrel curled up next to his grandmother and slept all winter while those scratches on his back healed. When spring came again, Little Brown Squirrel came out of his hole and looked at himself. There were long, pale stripes all the way down his back where Bear had scratched him. He was Brown Squirrel no longer. He was now Chipmunk, the striped one. That is how Chipmunk got his stripes. Ever since then, Chipmunk has been the first animal to get up every morning. As the sun rises, he scoots to the top of the tallest tree to sing his song. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. And ever since then, Bear has been the last animal to get up. He does not like to hear Chipmunk's song. It reminds him, as it reminds us all, that no one, not even Bear, can do everything. And that is the story of how Chipmunk got his stripes. Let's take a look at that Chipmunk again. There he is. Isn't he cute? Okay. So let's see, what do I have now for you? How about if we read this one? There are no cats in this book by Vivian Schwartz. No cats, let's find out. Oh. There are no cats in this book. Hello, you look friendly. Have you come?
come to visit? The thing is, we're just about to go. Yes, we're going to see the world. Sorry, we can't stay. Nice to have met you. Bye. Let's go out of the book this way. We just have to get through here. Everybody push. <sighs> Ouch. It didn't work. Oh dear, are you all right? I know. Let's jump out. One, two, three. Into the world. Goodbye. That was a good jump. Did it work? It must have. Hooray. Hello world. Goodbye book. Did it work? Oh, oh no. We're still here. We'll never get out of these pages. I wish I could see the world. <gasps> That's it. Great idea. Let's wish ourselves out. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. You gonna help? I wish, I wish. Can you say it with us? I wish, I wish, I wish. Psst. Will you help us before you turn this page? Close your eyes and wish for us. Wish for us out into the world. Are you ready? I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Go. they make it? Where are they? <gasps> they sent us a postcard. Let's see what it says. To you. Wishing worked. We're out. The world's great. We made lots of friends. Hope you're not too lonely. Back soon. Ah, the world and there's us. There's the three cats. You waited for us. Ah, home, sweet home. We brought you a surprise. Would you like a surprise? Wow, we're in a book. They all wanted to meet you. I like this place. Smells great. Nice book you have there. Hang on. There are cats in this book. Look at that lovely person, not to you. That's our friend, hello. Oh. And then they leave us one note. There isn't enough milk in this book. And that's the story of there are no cats in this book. That's a good story. So thanks for joining me for the per first part of story time. And I can't wait to read you some more stories in a few minutes. And I hope to see you at the library sometime soon. Stay tuned. My name's Miss Barbara. I'm so glad you're back with me for story time. I'm going to read another one of the great books that we have at the library. We have so many fun books here for you to read, and I'm going to share this one with you. This is called The Three Little Pigs and the Fox. You probably know versions of this story about the three little pigs. This is by William Hooks with pictures by S.D. Schindler. This story happened long time ago, way back when animals could still talk around these parts. Back then they could say a whole lot more than ba ba, moo moo, oink oink and stuff like that. They could talk just about like human folks. Back then there was this humongous mama pig. She built herself a house out of rocks in a pretty green hit valley over Black Mountain Way. As soon as she finished, she moved into her fine rock house with her three piglets. 
The oldest piglet Fruiter was a fair sized shoat. The middle piglet Oinky was a real mama's boy. The baby piglet was a tiny little girl runt named Hamlet. Now, Rooter and Oinky and Hamlet had the finest pig house in the holler. They even had a wallowing hole right in the front yard. But all Rooter and Oinky wanted to do was eat, eat, eat. Baby Hamlet liked to eat too, but not all the time. Hamlet liked to roll around in the delicious mud in the wallowing hole and look up at the pretty blue sky. She was a right smart piglet with more on her mind than eating. It wasn't long before Rooter and Oinky got so fat they just about filled up the whole house. What a squeeze it was to fit everybody in. Finally it got so tight that Mama Pig spoke to Rooter. Rooter, you're the oldest. Time's come for you to go out and seek your fortune. Oh no, Rooter squealed. I'm still a piglet. Look in that mud hole, said Mama Pig. What do you see? Rooter looked in the muddy water. I see a great big fat pig. That big fat pig is you, Rooter. Time's come to go and seek your fortune. Well, Rooter hemmed and hawed and had an extra big helping of his mama's baked beans to settle his nerves. Oinky had some too, just to keep Rooter company. Meanwhile, Mama Pig gathered up some hoe cakes and turnips along with some dried beans and corn. She packed them in a big toe sack for Rooter to take along. Now, son, Ma said Mama Pig, you'll be fine if you remember these three things. That's a lot to remember, said Rooter. Stop chewing and listen careful, said Mama Pig. Rooter gulped, I'm listening. One, you gotta watch out for that mean old tricky drooly mouth fox. Two, Build yourself a safe, strong house out of rocks. Three, come home to your mama every single Sunday. Mama and Oinky and baby Hamlet kissed Rooter on his fat round jowls, and for good luck they kissed him again on his pink trembly snout. Then Rooter trotted down the road, dragging his toe sack behind him. He walked and he walked, and what did all that walking do? It made him hungry. He didn't think about any mean, tricky old drooly mouth fox. He didn't think about any safe, strong rock house. He didn't think about visiting his mama come Sunday. All he could think about was the food his mama had put into the toe sack. So he set himself down on a rock and opened up the sack. Ho oh, cakes, he squealed and started gobbling them up. Rooter felt a tap on the shoulder. He didn't look around and he didn't miss a chew, just said between bites, don't bother me, I'm busy eating. But the tapping went on. Rooter swallowed a big chunk of hoe cake and looked around. There was mean, tricky old, drooly mouth fox grinning at him. Have some hoe cake, said Rooter, real scared. Don't like hoe cake, said the fox. Well, how about some turnips or corn, said Rooter. Don't like none of them, said the fox. Well, what can I offer you, said Rooter. I love barbecued pig, cried the fox, and he grabbed the toe sack and stuffed Rooter into it. Please don't eat me up, Rooter pleaded. I won't eat you right now, said mean, tricky old, drooly mouth fox. I'm going to save you up for a cold winter day. Nothing like hot barbecue on a cold winter's day. So he took poor Rooter off to his den and locked him up. Sunday rolled around. All day, Mama Pig and Baby Hamlet looked for Rooter to come visiting while Winky spent the Sabbath eating a double share of rutabagas and corn dumplings. But the night came on without Rooter ever showing up. A month of Sundays passed, and they didn't see snout or tail of Rooter. Meanwhile, Oinky was growing so big, the house was getting crowded again. They were having a hard time fitting in. Finally, Mama Pig said, Oinky, it's time you set out to seek your fortune. No, Mama, Oinky squealed. I'm too little to leave my Mama. Look in that mud hole. And tell me what you see, said Mama Pig. Oinky looked in the muddy water and saw how huge he had grown. He knew his mama was right. Oinky didn't say a word, but two big tears rolled, rolled down his plump jowls. Mama Pig said, no need for tears, Oinky. All you have to do is remember three things. One, watch out for that mean, tricky old drooly mouth fox. Two, build yourself a safe, strong house out of rocks. Three, come home to your mama every single Sunday. Mama packed Oinky a toe sack full of his favorite food. There's the toe sack, the big sack for all his stuff. 
and kissed Oinky on his fat, round jowls. And for good luck, they kissed him again on his pink, trembly snout. Oinky went slowly on down the road till he was out of sight. He walked and he walked and he walked and he kept thinking how much he was gonna miss his mama. He felt so sad he sat down on a rock to have a little nourishment and cheer himself. He didn't think once about the mean fox or building a safe house, although he did long for Sunday to visit his mama. Oinky was just easing a tooth into a crusty golden corn dumpling when he felt a tap on the shoulder. He whirled around so fast he dropped the dumpling. There was mean, tricky old, drooly mouth fox grinning at him. Would you like some of my dumplings? Stammered Oinky, scared to death. Never eat them, said the fox. How about some rutabagas? Asked Oinky. Can't stand the smell of them, said the fox. What do you like? Asked Oinky. Pork with lima beans, said fox. And he snatched up the toe sack and stuffed poor Oinky inside. Please don't eat me, begged Oinky. Please, please, please. Oh, said a mean old chucky drooly old mouth fox. I'm not going to eat you right now. I'm going to save you for a rainy day. There's nothing better than pork, pork and beans on a rainy day. So the fox took Oinky to his den and locked him up. Sunday rolled around. Mama and baby Hamlet got up early and cooked a big mess of collard greens and wild onions. They wanted to have something special in case Rooter and Oinky remembered to come see their mama. But the night came on without either Rooter or Oinky ever showing up. A month of Sundays passed, and they didn't see snout nor tail of Rooter or Oinky. The leaves turned all red and gold, and the nights got real nippy. Baby Hamlet, who didn't look so much like a little runt anymore, was getting restless. One day she spoke to her mama. Mama! It's high time I went out in the world to seek my fortune. No, no, Mama Pig cried. You're too young to leave your mama. Besides, none of my children ever come back to visit me on Sundays. Now, stop your worrying, Mama, said Hamlet. I can take care of myself. All I've got to do is remember three things. One, watch out for that mean, tricky old drooly mouth fox. Two, build myself a safe, strong house out of rocks. Three, come home and visit my dear, sweet Mama every Sunday. So Mama Pig packed a toe sack with sweet potato pone, Hamlet's favorite food. She kissed baby Hamlet on her fat round jowls and for luck kissed her again on her pink trembly snout. Hamlet skipped down the road. She walked and she walked. She looked all around to make sure no mean fox was sneaking up on her. She got tired and set herself down on a rock to rest. I think I'll just have a nibble on this sweet potato pone, she said. Suddenly she felt a tap on the shoulder. It was mean, tricky old, drooly mouth fox grinning at her. What a surprise! exclaimed Hamlet. She was thinking fast and stalling for time. I've got a real big surprise for you, said the fox. I mentioned surprise first, said Hamlet. This toe sack is full of surprises. Fox reached inside the sack and pulled out some sweet potato pone. Mmm, he mumbled, chewing away. Only one thing I like better than sweet potato pone. What's that? asked Hamlet. Pork chops to go with it, cried the fox, grabbing for baby Hamlet. But Hamlet was too sharp for him. She slapped the toe sack over the fox and tied it tight with a hard knot. Then she left that old fox rolling and squirming around on the ground inside the sack. Hamlet skipped on down the road till she found a place with a bunch of fine rocks. She made herself a safe little rock house with a nice fireplace to keep warm by. No sooner had Hamlet settled in than that mean, tricky old, drooly mouth fox came knocking at her door. Please let me in, little pig, he begged. I'm near freezing to death. Not on the fuzz of your bushy tail will I let you in, cried Hamlet. Please have mercy on a poor old fox. My nose is about frozen off. Just open the door crack to let me warm my nose, he pleaded. Hamlet cracked the door a mite. The fox shoved in his nose in the crack. Slam! Hamlet banged the door shut. The fox thought his nose would really drop off, it hurt so, but he was thinking of what nice pork chops Hamlet would make. My nose is warmer now, he called, but my ears are freezing. Please open the door a little wider so I can warm my ears. Hamlet opened the door a little more. The fox tried to push all the way in. Slam! 
Hamlet banged the door shut, pretty near knocking the breath out of mean, tricky old, drooly mouth fox. But the fox still had his mind set on pork chops. Oh, that was much better, little pig, he gasped. Now, if you would open the door a little bit more and let me get my hind feet warmed, I'll be on my way. Hamlet opened the door wide. The fox sprang inside, but that smart little pig was too fast for him. Slam! She shut the door on his tail and stopped him in his tracks. Oh, oh, my tail, cried the mean, tricky old drooly mouth fox. You be quiet, said Hamlet. You're making so much racket I can't hear what's going on outside. The fox lowered his lo voice to a moan. Please, my tail, my tail. Just what I thought I heard, said Hamlet. Dogs barking. Dogs? What kind of dogs? asked the fox. Hunting dogs. I'm sure they're fox hunting dogs from the way they're barking. Please hide me, cried the fox. Don't let the hounds catch me. Hamlet was thinking fast and sharp. I'll hide you if you tell me what you've done with Rooter and Oinky. They're locked up in my den. Please hurry. Those dogs will be here any minute. First, tell me where I can find your den. Mean, tricky old drooly mouth fox hated to give that away, but his tail was killing him and the dogs were hot on his trail. It's under the big, rusty-colored rock over on Rattlesnake Holler, he groaned. Here, jump into this churn, said Hamlet. She pushed the door, dro door off. Mean, tricky old drooly mouse fox and tail and lifted the lid from the big wooden churn. The fox squeezed inside. Hamlet slammed the lid down on the churn and lashed it tight. Are the dogs getting closer? The fox mumbled from inside the churn. What dogs? asked baby Hamlet. I don't hear no dogs. The old fox knew he'd been tricked. He gnashed his teeth and rattled and raved and shook the churn, but he couldn't get out. Baby Hamlet rolled the churn down to the creek and right in the water. Downstream it floated like an ark, and that was the last. Mean, tricky old drooly mouth fox was seen around the hollers of Black Mountain. Baby Hamlet hurried on down to Rattlesnake Holler and searched all around until she found the fox den with her brothers, Ruder and Oinky. It just happened to be on a Sunday when she found them and set them free. So they all trotted right over to Mama Pig's house. And there was snorting and eating and kissing and eating and wallowing in the mud hole and more eating the likes of which you'd never seen. And that is the story of the three little pigs and the fox. And that brings us to the end of Once Upon a Time. And let's sing our goodbye song. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye. Give a wave and say goodbye. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Goodbye. So sit me down and let the spell begin. I'll find myself in story 